Hi everyone! First of all, this episode just proved how carefree Sasuke is, especially with his Sharingan perception. This dude didn't even move an inch before Ishiki took Boruto. Naruto at least was able to run towards Ishiki, but Sasuke was just standing. Next, we see Naruto using his chakra arms against Ishiki. I think this was very cool and the way Ishiki fortlessly dodged the arms were slick too. But the moments after that were just stupid. Can someone explain to me why Sasuke kept using the same damn Chidori every time? He used that attack minutes ago and he discovered how fatale that was. But he kept repeating the same stupid move. Did he forget that Ishiki could just shrink either himself, summon a weapon using his dojutsu, or just straight up shrink his Chidori? Sasuke is for sure smarter than this man. He just reduced his level of thinking to the level of a kid. I know this was also in the manga, but I wish the animators could just remove that shit. Next we got the best football moment in a shonen show. Those multiple volley shots were absolutely fantastic. I don't know why, but I couldn't stop laughing. Was it the fact that Ishiki, who is the strongest character in the show, was just an average footballer on steroids? Or the fact that Sasuke Uchiha, who is one of the strongest shinobis ever, just stood there and got kicked around like a standard football? For God's sake, this has never happened in the manga. How can you add a bunch of filler shit like this and think you are making a better point in proving Sasuke is vastly inferior to Ishiki when all Ishiki is doing is just kick and kick and kick? There's no need to embarrass my man like this. Instead of putting crap like this in the anime, why didn't they just adapt the freaking manga correctly? This would be way cooler than just making Ishiki use Sasuke as volley shots. Now moving on to Naruto. Throughout the whole Naruto anime, we've always known Naruto wasn't the brightest among his peers academic-wise, but during battles he could be as clever as Shikamaru if he wanted to. But damn, this episode just showed how much Naruto's mentality has regressed as he became older. Isn't Naruto just 33 years old, why is his battle intelligence already this dumb as if he became an old man? Just like Sasuke, he continued to use the same jutsu that was shrunk by the same person a while ago. At this point, it seems that Kishimoto just doesn't care about how smart or tactical his characters are, as long as he is able to show how overpowered the villain is. Next, we see Naruto trying to use Kurama's chakra, and I found this extremely funny and wholesome at the same time. Where did he even learn how to condense Kurama's chakra into his arm this much? The last time we saw him doing something like this was against an area and it wasn't as condensed as this. Both got beaten by the most powerful villains at that time. Both got stabbed by rods and both were dancing around the villain. For the longest time we've seen people making fun of Hinata for fighting pain like this. But should we also laugh as Naruto the hero is getting danced around while getting slapped literally at the same time? He was literally slapped by Ishiki. Next we see Sasuke still knocked out from the multiple volley shots he received earlier from Ishiki. Also, Ishiki just standing there looking at how Boruto tries to remove the debris on Sasuke responsibly. What a true gentleman. Sasuke sees he's about to launch some of his roads at Naruto. Realistically, what is Sasuke meant to do to save Boruto's life? A. Swap a boulder in place of Boruto just like you did multiple times, especially against Kinshiki. B. Use one of your Rinnegan abilities like Almighty Push to deflect the rods. C. Use your Susano arm to protect Boruto. But our intelligent Sasuke decided not to use any of these preferred and easy options. Instead, he decided to become suicidal for literally no reason. Nice job there, genius. Studio Piro really loves to shit on you. At this point, the Renegan is just used either as a taxi to travel through dimensions or a suicidal method for Sasuke. It doesn't even make him look stronger. It's the other way around. What's the purpose of a Renegan if you can't even use it correctly and to your own advantage? And I really love the gods Boruto had there. This is one of the few fillers that I loved in this episode. But we all know how that turned out, right? Dude got his arm destroyed with no remorse from Ishiki. Also, that scream got to be the most gut wrenching scream in Boruto. Dude spat a load of saliva before he could even scream. Ah, how could I almost forget Sasuke getting kicked once again by Ishiki? At this point, Sasuke isn't even relevant in this battle at all. When you're beaten, kicked, persecuted like a child who is being bullied, it's just a shame to look. How can anyone even take Sasuke seriously? Ishiki literally turned him into a skateboard. We see Kurama and Naruto having their last interactions together. This was beautifully animated. It was also very sad for me as a manga reader, since I already knew the real truth about the Baryon mode. Also, it seems that after Baryon mode, Naruto might have the ability to fly after all. He literally launched himself like a rocket. 
Contrary to many people's opinion, I don't find the style nor the design of this mode bad in the anime. It's just as bad as as the manga version. The color also made sense since this was Kurama's own chakra being used up alone. After watching the preview for the big fight, I was not going to put high hopes for the fight at all. Let me be completely honest, the fight would be so much below everyone's expectations. The fight is gonna be just like the Boro Shiki vs Boro fight. The reason is because this is gonna be a one-sided battle and the number of hits Naruto gives Ishiki in the anime has to be the same exact number from the manga. If this was not the case, fans would greatly underestimate the capabilities of this form. Just by looking at the preview, you could see how Naruto was just blitzing and punching Ishiki just like the manga version. It's just like the earplugs completely overpowered Boro that you could even call it a fight at all. We thought Ishiki was violent in the manga, hell no. The anime made him so much powerful. In the manga, Naruto and Sasuke at least tried to put up a decent fight. But in the anime, Ishiki pulls up and absolutely destroys both of them. I might have a problem with how Sasuke was portrayed in this episode, however. He is not using his abilities properly. I know Ishiki is too powerful, but Sasuke could have at least tried something since there are a lot of Sasuke fans, including me, who will not like Sasuke taking the back seat when Naruto gets to shine like a bright star. It's not fair. However, the anime did the fight so much better in my opinion. It was just so good. I wasn't expecting so much risk in a single episode. Ishiki demonstrated a clear difference in the power between him and the rest of the series. He is by far the strongest character in the show. But what about Naruto's Baryon mode? We will talk about it in a moment. Let's also not forget how good of a character development Boruto had in this episode. Instead of the bratty kid we got before, who constantly complained about Naruto not being home, we got this very mature Boruto who is willing to risk his life to save the world. This is amazing character development, I love this. But there's one thing I didn't like about this arc. This arc gives Naruto something to do before he loses his power but completely doesn't do this for Sasuke. They take Sasuke's ring again away without giving him a Baryon mode Naruto-like moment. I believe that is a very big disappointment in poor writing. Sasuke is a well-respected character and should have a deserving way to lose his ring again, not by some random kunai. I think we could see an extended Borushiki vs adult Sasuke fight coming in the anime to give him some sort of justice, but I think it's utterly unfair and a mockery of Sasuke's potential. Aside from the Sasuke fan inside of me getting a little salty, I believe this is hands down the best episodes in the series. I know the next episodes will probably surpass this one, but as of now, I think this episode is comparable to episode 65, 189, 207 and so on. With Boruto having teleported Ishiki to a different dimension, and Sasuke arriving there with Naruto, sacrifice was all about the three ninjas trying their best to prevent Ishiki from traveling back to Kanoha and kidnapping Kawaki. Yes, Ishiki only had a day or two to live. However, even with such a nerf, Ishiki can be underestimated. He made quick work of Naruto and Sasuke. Seeing the iconic duo being kicked around by Ishiki was fun. Naruto and Sasuke needed something powerful to even stand a chance against such an OP. Of course, Naruto came through at the very end, but I'll get to it in a bit. My favorite scene from the battle was the one with Naruto and Sasuke teaming up against Ishiki to land at least one hit. With Naruto holding Ishiki in place with his chakra hands to allow Sasuke to come in with his Chidori attack, the powerful Otsutsuki summoned a bunch of gigantic cubes to crush them. I don't know about you, but I'm a fan of the visual. Everything was slowed down during that moment. Such a creative decision helped to increase the intensity and make viewers feel a bit anxious about whether or not Sasuke's Chidori could hit Ishiki in time. Due to Naruto and Sasuke being down for the count, Boruto had no other choice but to enter the fight. Boruto's theory about Ishiki not wanting to kill him proved correct. Turns out Ishiki had decided to keep Boruto alive so he could feed our young ninja to the Ten Tails. According to Amado, the Tsutsuki traveled in pairs because the lower rank of Tsutsuki was to be fed to the Ten Tails to create the God Tree. The higher ranking Otsutsuki would then eat the chakra fruit, while the sacrificed one would be resurrected via a vessel. Also, sacrificing a healthy Tsutsuki led to a more potent fruit. Kaguya, as a lower ranked Tsutsuki, was supposed to sacrifice herself for Ishiki so he could eat the god chakra fruit that would be created after destroying every life on Earth. However, she betrayed Ishiki. 
The Kara organization's initial plan was to feed Jigen to the Ten Tails and have Ishiki be resurrected through Kawaki's karma mark. But due to Boruto becoming Momoshiki's vessel, the plan changed. Now, Boruto was to be sacrificed to the Ten Tails and Ishiki could still go ahead and resurrect herself after implanting another karma mark on Kawaki. Saita. Nareta, Furiwo Stater.